day to you, Guyana, and welcome to Facing the Nation. Thank you very much for joining us again this week. Um, I, well, there's no um, element of surprise today. Usually the shot is on me, and then you have to guess for a bit who's the guest, but you don't have to do that today. He's right here with me, of course. He is, and this is not the first time he's on this program, of course. It's his first time on this program since he became Minister of uh, Natural Resources, the Honorable Raphael Trotman. Welcome to Facing the thank Nation. Thank you for sir. having me, and as I, I'd just like to say thank you again welcome everyone for having me again and as I was coming in mm -hmm. uh, I had a good warm feeling because it, it felt good to be back and, and like I'm home, I like home. <laughs> and I'm hoping that you know we can do it a little more regularly if, okay. if you don't mind that I could come Great. often and just update wonderful the rather viewers, than wait an yes. entire year the, yes, thank you the viewers would appreciate that I mean even though I, I I think I can go out on a limb here and say they like seeing me sometimes they want to see the other others yeah. yes. <laughs> um, viewers uh, the reason we're going to be chatting with the Minister of Natural Resources today because this is we're currently in mining week um, mining week in Guyana is being observed from the 21st of August to the 27th of course tomorrow is the last day but it's never too late to have this conversation the honorable Raphael Trotman is going to talk to you about the mining sector and what's happening and so on and again it's unfortunate that we only focus on certain areas at this period when there is something to you know to be said about observing it um minister my first question is is, is really a, a very broad and wide and basic one what is the current state of Guyana's mining sector? Well, the mining sector, I would say, is in a healthy state. Okay. Uh, but I would be misinforming the nation if I said it was in a perfectly healthy state. Okay. Uh, we still have many issues that we're clearing up. We inherited a system that was very unregulated. It was almost like a free-for-all. Oh. And even as you, as I know you have Malika from time to time, flown over Guyana, mm -hmm. it looks as if the, the, some parts of the country look scarred, yes. holes. Mm -hmm. When those holes get filled with water, they breed mosquitoes. Those mosquitoes carry malaria, germs, and uh, the virus, Zika sometimes, dengue, mm -hmm. uh, chikungunya. So we, we have to, it's good to say that we've increased production by almost 100%. Mm -hmm. So we are doing very well in terms of gold production. Bauxite is up, diamonds are up, everything is up. But at the same time, we need to focus, and we are putting more emphasis and focus on land reclamation, mm -hmm. respect for the environment, and respect for the waterways because miners sometimes pollute. Uh, miners pollute sometimes and, and don't seem to remember or care yeah. that there are communities nearby that depend on this water for drinking, for bathing, for everything, mm -hmm. riverine communities. And so it's, it's mining with respect, respect for people, respect for self, respect mm -hmm. for the environment. And that's where our emphasis is being placed now. And as you know, we have uh, unfortunately lost four persons uh, who yes, died in mining in accidents mm -hmm. uh, for the year. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that for everyone that dies, the president takes it on very personally. And mm -hmm. I, I cringe when I have to inform him. Mm -hmm. And so he's given me a mandate to address it. We've come down from where it was before. Um, one year we had as many as about 18. Mm -hmm. Uh, so four for the year may sound good, but for me it's four too, too many. many. And so we're working on improving safety as well, holding seminars, going to miners, speaking to them about better practices, best practices, how to construct a mine spit, how to maintain it, uh, signs of danger and how to um, avoid the in, collapses. In mm -hmm. doing that, um, however, Minister, and it, is, it, it really is unfortunate and it's, it has somewhat become a part of our culture. When things are going wrong, the, we go to it. I mean, I'm a part of it, right. but I, we still blame the government. You did talk about all the things that you're mm -hmm. doing in terms of those pits caving in, but really and truly, how much control do you or, or does mm -hmm. your ministry really have over those things? Because you could, it's like they say, you can take a lead of what? A dog to a pond, but you exactly. can't make him drink. How much control? You know, you, you're very right. Uh, we've had instances where mines officers went and closed mines. Mm -hmm. And when that mine officer left, Two days after this, people went back in at night and started digging again. And there was an accident that resulted in a death. So the, the ministry and the DGMC would have done their best in such an instance, but still you feel a sense of responsibility. So we're trying to work with the, we have a mine, mining school, mm -hmm. trying to work with the UNDP and a few other agencies to, to better educate miners. Okay, this is what you want to do. But this is a right way and this is a wrong way. And it's not a phenomenon that is unique to Guyana. 
people get obsessed sometimes with going after wealth and gold. Yes. And mm -hmm. there's a kind of a fever that comes mm -hmm. over you apparently. So we've got to make yeah. sure that it's safe. And, and uh, it's not good enough for government to say, well, you know, we've done our best. Okay. Our best is never going to be enough. We have to keep trying and working at it. And, and like I said, bring that number down to zero. To zero. That's our intention. Unfortunately, another thing that we think about whenever we hear mining, the mining industry, mining communities, we think about human trafficking, or it, it's more is, most yes. known to us as trafficking in persons. I know the majority of it falls under the Ministry of Social Protection, but how much involved is your ministry to? And again, mm -hmm. it's, it's about our girls and our exactly. women. Exactly. So this is something that we're taking very seriously. Uh, mm -hmm. Minister Brooms uh, is doing a lot of work yeah. there. And we recently convened a meeting, again, with a hierarchy top officers of the GGMC and said to them, target the shops because it is, it is the shops that lead to these women being brought in. But um, some of them, and I'm not condoning it, some I are consulting that. adult women. But it's when you find uh, little children being dragged in, it's a sin. And therefore, we are working in conjunction with ministries of social protection mm -hmm. and the ministry of public security. Okay. So that where there's a task force set up, so that we can play our part as well. And so we, if we can get to the source, that is these mining shops and the landings, and try to manage them, who gets the license and who gets a permission, and the kind of standard we expect from such a person. We believe we could play a part in, in uh, keeping it to a minimum. I always like to play um, devil's advocate and mm. give an ear to the naysayers sometimes. At this point, how do you respond to somebody who would say to you that the mining industry is in trouble? Just, just, just flat like that, out of the Well, the, the, you know, I read a statistic recently. Mm -hmm. It says no matter which government is in power, and this is in any part of the world, it will never enjoy more than about 60% <laughs> approval rating because there's always going to be somebody who says it is in trouble. Mm -hmm. But then Mr. Hoyt, uh, you know, was very famous for quoting Mark Twain, said mm -hmm. there are lies. Their mm, damn lies right. and then their statistics. The, sti the statistics show <laughs> that mining is doing far better um, over the last year, and in fact, it, uh, so much so that it is holding the economy up uh, now that sugar and rice are in trouble. So last year we produced 456,000 ounces. This year we are going to produce over 600,000 ounces. That alone tells you mm -hmm. of gold. But like I said, I'm not here to champion the cause of oh. mining mm -hmm. because there's these, these other things that bother us mm -hmm. and you're right the trafficking of little girls and yes. boys um, workers who are not paid by big miners you know people leave their homes and leave their families and they go and work and after three months they fall ill with malaria and they're sent out or not given enough mm -hmm. medical attention have or have you had hmm? many of these reports they come in over? they come in mm -hmm. from time to time and even yesterday we were, a team was in, in Bamalai, mm -hmm. and we had a few reports of persons being owed. So what we tried to do is actually bring the people together and say, look, sort these things out. And I must say that we were able to have a few of them settled and be working on a few others. So people tend to take advantage of each other. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, there's, there are issues of trafficking. There are issues of guns being smuggled and used, like near the border with Venezuela. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of gun activity, drugs, um, and in some instances, in some communities, uh, even a few suicides. And it's, uh, yeah, it's interesting that, mm -hmm. uh, and I always say the ministries are really supposed to be working with each other because right. it's interesting that we're talking about natural resources but and basically the environment, but there are so many things that fall. Exactly. Do you at all feel a sense of, of, of pressure or burden? Well, there, there, is, there is a burden because you, mm -hmm. there are people's lives um, literally in your hands. And um, mm -hmm. like I said, when you hear stories about the trafficking or uh, persons not getting their wages, or there's another one where people, um, you know, young men from Agricola or the Ants Grove or somewhere, they go on, on somebody's land. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they find gold, the person turns up and throws them off. And so they're left hungry, mm -hmm. their equipment gets seized, their engine is seized or something like that. And, you know, we, we've been trying to respond to those stories. So one, one of the things we're doing is trying to put uh, land into the hands of small miners so they don't need to go begging anybody for a position or a place on their plot. So we've been um, trying to identify the real, the meaningful cases and granting land titles to them. Okay.
Okay, all right, great. Viewers, if you're now tuning in, this is Facing the Nation. Of course, today I am talking with the Honorable Minister Raphael Trotman. He is the Minister of Natural Resources, and our conversation comes against the backdrop of the fact that this is uh, mining. mining Week. And, and also we're talking about some other things because this is our first public conversation um, since he took over as uh, Minister of Natural Resources. Let's talk specifically about Mining Week now, some of mm -hmm. the activities and how it has, you, how you, you find it has, um, if you found it is, it has improved over the years and with that too this goes back a bit directly to mining are you willing to say that the new not necessarily your ministry mm -hmm. but the new government would have taken over somewhat of a broken sector oh it was it was as i said unregulated like a free-for-all mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's taken time but we've made great progress mm -hmm. gold was being smuggled people were uh, mining wherever and when however they wanted to and so we've put the regulations back in place. We've Great resistance more, are coming from um, the There was some, but I think when people realize that you're serious, they okay. test you. They test ah. your resolve. They test <laughs> you to see, yes. let's see if this government is serious and how committed are they to, to changing things. And, and they respond. But if, if you back off at the first sign of resistance, <laughs> they'll, they'll push. So Mining Week has been, I would say, successful. It, it ends next, uh, tomorrow yes. in Bartica, mm -hmm. where there's going to be a kind of a, yeah. a Bartica-type soiree. <laughs> And uh, we, we started off with a dinner, and this year we recognized some outstanding persons, some icons, uh, top producers, top uh, miners, and so mm -hmm. forth. And we ensured yesterday that we had a part of it devoted to oil and gas, where we had a lecture mm -hmm. on the value of education, mm -hmm. educating our citizens and people going to school and understanding what the oil and gas uh, industry is all about. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was an exhibition held um, at the Durban Park um, site mm -hmm. uh, where persons could go and actually see mining equipment, uh, demonstrations of mining and so forth. So all in all, it has, it has gone down well. Gone. And uh, I should have said, rather, it started last week, Saturday in Linden, mm -hmm. uh, where we um, held a workshop on bauxite mining. And to just say that this year, in October, Guyana will mark 100 years of bauxite mining. And so there's going to be a good commemorative um, series of events in October, November for that yeah. um, in Linen and Coquanit. Okay, all right. Minister, there are also um, two other things I'd like to talk mm. about. We're all talking about the green economy, protecting the environment and so on, this green economy providing the good life. But before I do that, let's talk about oil and gas. And you just touched on it. Are we really prepared people are still even though i know there's lots of information out there especially mm -hmm. your ministry you keep putting the information out there and we see the still, work yeah. but people are still those who are not apprehensive or negative about it and then you have the ones who say no we can't wait for oil at least we'll mm -hmm. all have money mm -hmm. in our mm -hmm. pockets exactly. well again very good question we discovered oil last year may yes we're now almost at the time the same age as our government mm -hmm. 15 months so it would not be true to say that we are ready Okay. Um, but the intention is to be ready when production comes in, a, in about three, four years, uh, about four years. Mm -hmm. And so every day we are moving the agenda forward. And we are getting a lot of international help and support, and we're taking it because we, we can't afford to say no. So help is coming from the U.S. government, Canadian government, the United Nations, the Mexican government. Uh, recently, uh, only yesterday, the Minister of Energy of Trinidad and Tobago mm -hmm. was here, paid yes. a courtesy call on His Excellency the President. Uh, so, the President has asked that we partner with Trinidad to learn from them experiences that are both good and bad. What yes. do you do with your money? Do you waste it? What programs do you have? And so, um, these are things that we, we're doing to prepare, and it's a process. And I know that there's skeptics, but uh, what I can say is that my mandate from His Excellency is to get the country ready. And we're working uh, across ministries. It's not just the Ministry of Natural Resources. And so there's a ministerial task force that mm -hmm. comprises Minister of Finance, mm -hmm. the Minister of Public Infrastructure, the Minister of Social Protection, because you have labor issues, yes. the Minister of Agriculture, because people have to be fed. Um, yeah. There are issues with offshore drilling. Fisher, peop, fisher folk, as they're now referred to, you can't mm -hmm. say fishermen, but they're, yes. they're women who are fishing oh, too. Yes, so indeed. fisher <laughs> folk have to be taken care of and respected, and what happens to you know, navigation and in the event of an oil spill. We also have, the, of course, the Minister of Communities there, because communities along the coast must benefit. 
the Minister of Business, very important, mm -hmm. is also yes. a member of this task force. And so we've been meeting and discussing things. So things are a lot is happening. Uh, we have engaged the the committee of parliament, the Natural Resources Committee, which is chaired by the opposition, Mr. Yes. Odinga, the honourable member, mm -hmm. Mr. Lumumba. We've been engaging with him as well because, uh, you know, the, the president says, and right, this is not the preserve of the AP and UAFC government. This is the wealth of Guyana. Guyana so it is yeah. our duty to reach out. And uh, late in the year, we are going to have like a nationwide consultation. This is about what is happening. Explain to people what it means. Yes, that is what's needed. coming. And you know, in, in, I can give you an example of Trinidad, where with oil, people stop farming. And so it happens. You they start import because money. You, you stop farming and you start importing everything and your taste change so you're not eating guavas anymore. There's a serious only, danger in that. <laughs> exactly. You only want to dine on grapes and apples. And so when the price of oil drops, and it does drop, yes. you're left without food. You're left with this large bill and you have tastes and habits now that you can't afford anymore. So that's why you know having the Ministry of Agriculture engaged and involved at this early stage is, is something that we're pushing. Mm -hmm. um, so and, and it's ongoing. So, so there mm -hmm. has to be that balance. Balance. It's not, yeah. not a, not, you know, it's not, you, right. you should not forsake the and goal for exactly. the Exactly. Not only that, we, can't, we have to ensure that the development is across the board, that we don't put all of our eggs in the, uh, the petroleum basket. Because mm -hmm. again, if the price of oil drops, as it did earlier this year, to $30 from 120 mm -hmm. it, yeah. it almost ruined and mashed up. Venezuela is in trouble. Trinidad is in trouble because of that. And oil producing uh, countries that didn't prepare found themselves in serious trouble. In serious trouble. Mm -hmm. You talked a lot about the help that we're getting. Mm -hmm. I, I have friends, who, and I, I always say this on this program, mm -hmm. I have friends who tell me all the time I'm p pessimistic. I don't like to see it that way. I like to see it as being realistic. While you're getting all of this help, the advice and so on mm -hmm. and what to do, are there measures to ensure that we're protecting ourselves as a country, or am I way off base here? And I'm not trying to no, you're very right. target yeah. anybody who's coming to help no, us to no. say that you steal from us, but this right. is the reality. You're, you're, here. you're, you're correct. Um, we've chosen to engage some governments, and we've chosen to have like, the United Nations and the Commonwealth Secretary, as I should have mentioned, mm -hmm. um, assisting us with drafting laws. Okay. We're also um, hoping to bring, or intending to bring to Parliament late in the year, laws to look at what is called local content. That is mm. to protect Guyanese in this industry because it would be a, sh a shameful day if you wake up yeah. and see that you know those who are already benefiting are the non-Guyanese. So even as you welcome others to come to help develop Guyana, the, the, the benefits must first be enjoyed by Guyanese. And okay. we also have a duty to set aside a portion of every dollar that we earn for future generations because Oil, like gold, is a finite resource. Once it's come out of the ground, you can't put it you back can't put in. It back. Uh -huh. So we can't spend all that money in this generation. We've got to put aside for another 100 years even so that the children of tomorrow can benefit from that wealth that we're earning today. So all of those are initiatives that are, work, that are being worked on throughout the day. Every day, someone is working on a different aspect of things. Okay, great. Let's talk about the other part of, of, of natural resources that everyone is talking about now. The importance of this green economy, and of course, I know you mm -hmm. mentioned Bartico earlier. Um, as recent as yesterday, the ad presidential advisor on the environment made a presentation to the Minister of State um, regarding the development of Bartico. Let's talk about your ministry's involvement in, in ensuring that we indeed move as quickly as we can toward this green mm -hmm. economy. Well, the, the green economy is a phrase that some people say, what is it? But it really means that you're, everything you do must be done in an environmentally and sustainable manner. Environmentally safe and sustainable manner. So um, the way we use water, you know, where you just leave your pipe on mm -hmm. and you allow it to run, uh, that's by turning off or not abusing it, you're greening your use of water. Um, getting into hydropower, using the sun for energy, using wind power, that's greening. Um, where you build your home, sometimes the way you, sit, the way you build a house and the way the breeze uh, passes through mm. it or the way the sun catches it makes a difference because mm. If it's very hot, you're going to have to go and buy air conditioners or fans, yes. which runs up your electricity bill. So mm -hmm. even the manner in which you build and, and live has to do with greening of the economy. So 
before we had the low carbon development strategy. That's just really how to keep carbon emissions low. Mm -hmm. But the president is right. He says we need to go beyond, beyond that. keeping carbon low and turn our entire economy and way of life into sustainable living and being environmentally friendly. So this is what it's all about. Bartica mm -hmm. is a pilot project, so to speak, and we're going to have Bartica stand out as the first model community in Guyana. And from that, we will take the lessons learned and do them in the other places. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully one day people can look at Guyana, uh, Georgetown again and says, you know, I Garden City, mm -hmm. a green place, clean canals, flowing water, freshness, green spaces where you can go and recreate and, mm -hmm. and feel comfortable. All of that is a mental uh, thing as well as it is physical. You, you've got to have a sense of wholesomeness and be at peace in your environment. And, and this is what is meant by, by uh, greeting your, your economy. Your economy. I know you're not the mayor and city council. You, did, mm -hmm. you, did, you, just, <laughs> you just did talk mm -hmm. about some of your um, vision for Georgetown. Is you, but your ministry play a major role in, and I've seen some comments on social media recently. People are asking, what is it? Are we slipping back into our old filthy ways because we see garbage con um, mm -hmm. beginning to pile up again? Sm as small as they may be, mm -hmm. they can, you know, it build up. up. Yep. Yeah. So with that vision that you have mm -hmm. for Georgetown, do, do, how what do we need to put in place to ensure that people well, stay on the right path? Education is what it, it mm -hmm. takes because I'm still amazed that you know. After the wonderful work we did last year, there's still some people who, I yeah. know somebody just threw an umbrella yes. out of a car yesterday. The mm -hmm. umbrella obviously broke, and, and so they don't want it. it out. They couldn't wait to wherever they were going, whether home or, so it goes through the window, it lands mm -hmm. on the parapet, and where they threw it out, of course, they don't live there, so it becomes it, the person, the pers their problem, that person's problem. Mm -hmm. So it takes education, it takes a restoration of pride again in pride in oneself, pride in your community, and a belief in a system. I think people have lost hope, and slowly and surely it's uh, returning mm -hmm. after elections of last year. But we can't say that everyone was fully on board. I think it will take time, but um, hopefully we're not going to slip back. And for our part of the ministry, we have a little environmental program where we've been assisting with cleaning up, in fact, the new tongues. Mm -hmm. So we clean the, the waterfront Bartica, and if you go into Bartica, there are boxes and bottles strewn around the stellium. We clean that. Uh, within a week, it was looking almost the same again. We cleaned up uh, Port Kaituma Harbor, um, waterways, Mabaruma, mm -hmm. and we're moving to let them next. So we're trying to okay. the new towns, and we're going to try to set up with the mainstream communities, give them support or, or partner with them, uh, parks in these new tongues mm -hmm. so that people Understood. if you if you have a tongue you must have a park in it it must you know the place we could yeah, go i'm getting the image exactly <laughs> so we're playing our part by um, assisting ministry of communities to get those there okay all right great um viewers it's almost time for me to wrap up my conversation with uh, the uh, minister he has to get back to his busy schedule i'm also expecting a little later on in the program um our pick for vice chairperson of the PNCR, of course, the young James Bond. You know I had him on last week, but I'm just bringing him back today. I don't see him as yet. Uh, but, of course, we'll talk if he doesn't get here. Today is a very busy day for us. So, uh, for once, this one self forgive him if um, <laughs> he doesn't show up. Minister Trotman. Apart from natural resources, you were even before you were um, you were the minister of governance. You were uh, the speaker of the national assembly. You've held so many offices. No. You're also he's also an attorney of, at law. I should also remind you viewers. So, I can't possibly have you on this program and not put you in the hot seat just a little bit, just a little bit of heat, some smoke. Um, <laughs> criticisms will continue to come against the new administration. Mm -hmm various ministers and, and, and viewers, my intention here is not to be negative or pinpoint or knock any minister. You have your mm -hmm. opinions out there and I'm not trying to take that from you. But minister, there are times in the last two or three months when the government would have come in for some criticisms. In, in many cases, a beating, whether it be for statements um, made by ministers, mm -hmm. what we might want yeah. to say, mistakes or willful. Um, what would you like to say to people mm -hmm. out there now who are, they've in a sense already, even though it's only a year, lost hope? You know, I, I too sometimes, uh, like the people out there, say what is going on to myself. Mm -hmm. And 
I have to go back to the vision and I anchor myself in the president's vision and okay. I anchor myself in his integrity and I know that he has plans for Guyana and I also have to remember that none of us is perfect ah. and you know sometimes we we do things uh, believing them to be correct they turn to be wrong uh, the cabinet was in a, for the most part an inexperienced cabinet mm -hmm. in the sense that except for Prime Minister Nagamutu and Minister Greenwich no other member including the president had been in a cabinet before and so we we had to learn mm -hmm. you'd been in in battle for 23 years against the PPP mm -hmm. and it took some time and it is taking some time and yesterday I read an article out of Canada where the new government of Canada has come in for some similar criticism okay. to the criticisms we've been getting here and the, the, the mm -hmm. report in the newspapers was about um, the image and the very discussion about the newness of a cabinet, the newness of a government that governments will make mistakes and uh, it is the job of the opposition to magnify them. You think that the war is about to end? Yes. When you, when you, when I read some of the things being said about Minister Norton and so it's like the mm -hmm. worst. I mean, people tend to forget that mansions were throw, built. Throw him into the fire. Yeah. Mansions <laughs> were built in this country, and money by the millions disappeared, billions. Mm -hmm. And here it is. Uh, Minister made a statement based on what he was told. And he since said, you know, I, I was mistaken. I am sorry about that. But it's as if this man is the devil himself. He must go to hell. And what about all the buildings around town where no taxes were paid for, the monies that disappeared? When you go, when you go to some buildings, um, the, the school at Cato, that nearly a billion, one billion dollars nearly was spent on a school that cannot be used mm -hmm. by students and nobody could account for the money. You, you tend to forget that, wait a minute, are you the same world or is somebody messing with your mind? Mm. So, Minister, yes. if, if, I, if I may interject here, again, uh -huh. devil's advocate, I have had someone who said to me, Malika, listen, them things are relevant no more. It's you know. y'all in there now. They, they say that. Well, the point I'm making is mistakes have been made, but don't compare, you know, in, in the U.S. they talk about comparing apples and oranges. So mm. I say don't compare a guava with a mango. <laughs> True. Um, <laughs> so, Yes, some mistakes were made, but none of them were based on corruption. Mm -hmm. There's no allegation that says Minister Norton took any money. All that may be said is that there was some uh, misjudgment in the manner in which a transaction was done. Mm -hmm. But nobody could say, yes, Minister Norton took money. Nobody could say that um, a billion dollars is spent on something, and when you go, it, you can't find out where the money is. Nobody could see Minister Norton or another minister building a mansion anywhere. That's not happening. So, yes, while those things are not irrelevant, let's accept that, you know, we are human. We are doing our best. Mm -hmm. We have to continue to trust uh, the president and his judgment. Uh, I believe, as I will always say publicly and in private, that he's the best person to lead this country at this point in time, okay. barring none. And therefore, let us continue to trust him. There was good reason why we trusted him last year. Let us continue to do so and accept that he will do what is right for Guyana. Because, like I said, what we had in the past was not being right for Guyana. So I'm not here trying to cover up, to condone. I, we accept the criticisms. And in fact, Malaika, we need those criticisms because okay. they are good reminders to us that we are there to serve the people and of Guyana. And keep you on the ground. And to keep us grounded. And you know, and I, I can say this now, I, you know, people don't know the, the, the blazing that Minister Norton got from his colleagues in cabinet. So mm -hmm. it is not as if there was an attempt to shield him. Okay. We said to him, you have to be more responsible. You've got to be more involved in what's happening in your ministry. You can't just be relying on people who tell you something without mm -hmm. verifying things for yourself. So, because, you know, one minister's actions affects all mm -hmm. and the entire government, and people kind of judge you on that. So mm -hmm. um, there's no government in the world without some errors, but that's not to say that we should continue making the same mistakes yes. over and over. Mm -hmm. We are going to make some mistakes in the future, but we should not be making the same ridiculous, and if I may be allowed to say stupid mistakes, mm -hmm. over and over. I think for that we should be penalized. Okay. Because when a pattern evolves, there's something wrong. And you should learn 
from your mistakes and like I said, when I'm in doubt, when I'm a bit confused and even sometimes feeling a little down, <laughs> I go back to the president's vision and I say to myself, this is why I'm here. I believe in his vision, I believe in his sincerity and I believe that he has Guyana's good at heart and I will, I've committed to that and that is what keeps me going. Thank so I'm you. asking the people of Guyana to, to hold to that. Thank you. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. And this is exactly why this is one of my favorite guests. Oh. I can't give him the favorite one because they got oh. some people out there who will hurt me. <laughs> but this is the reason yes. this is one of my uh, favorite James, guests. James Bond 007 is I, coming. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> I, I, I hope he is. <laughs> All right, Minister, thank you so very mm -hmm. much for your time. It has been a pleasure well, as like always. I said, it's, it's good to be back. And I had mm -hmm. a good warm feeling just coming in here. And I'm available. Yes, um, I know, needed. always. And sometimes it's, you know, it's good to just keep it gauged with the, as you know, yeah. you've been doing that job by yourself. And so we thank Malaika <laughs> for keeping that flag flying and staying in touch. And it is for the ministers and so to give you the support. So I'm pledging my support to come, not, I know, not, not, not every, every week. time, not every time. but yes, I will I do my best I, to I, support I you because I know the value of programs like these to okay. let people know what's going on. And a lot and the last word is sure. a lot of um, ignorance causes a lot of things. And if people don't know mm -hmm. and they're not being given the information, they will naturally exactly. assume things. And they will attack and, you. And, and the first bit of mischief or misconception goes into their heads is what they will hold on to. So it is our duty, our job to come and explain things to people, to be honest, to say, you know, we made a mistake. We thought this was the correct way to do something, but it wasn't, and this is what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. And people, I believe, are prepared to understand that. If you refuse to, to speak to them, or yes. you appear arrogant, or you say, I don't owe you an ex any explanation, they are upset, because they literally gave blood, sweat, and tears. tears. Mm -hmm. to, and people died in the 23 years for the cause. Exactly. And so they're, they're owed explanations, they're owed a standard of, of, re of government, and they, they expect us to behave ourselves and to act differently. Okay. So thank you. Thank you so much, good. Minister Trump. Have a good evening and see you uh, all later. Uh, yes. Okay, <laughs> Minister. Thank you very much. Um, viewers, what we'll do is take a quick break. As I said, I am expecting uh, Mr. James Anthony Bond in. Um, if he doesn't come, we're going to wrap up the program a little bit earlier because, again, we're busy with Congress, the PNCR's Congress, uh, later on today. So I'll take this quick break, and then I will be back with you. This is Facing the Nation.